that we are seeing uh, a, a promising result uh, in our COVID numbers. Uh, those key trends, uh, a greater proportion of residents vaccinated, uh, cases from an overall perspective beginning to decrease, uh, combined, frankly, with warmer weather. Uh, this indicates that this is the season in which we expect to see the biggest transformation in our return uh, to normal. We can look forward to workers returning uh, to offices. We can look forward to boosting revenues for our downtown businesses. We'll also see more outdoor events, which is one of the major reasons we could successfully hold uh, this past weekend's Indianapolis 500. Now, as always, Dr. Kane will be on shortly with the precise data. Uh, but we know that the vaccine is having a positive impact in a wide variety of different uh, contexts. And that is why we are not letting up at all uh, in the vaccine effort. Just over one third of, of our county's residents are vaccinated. Uh, and we need to get that number higher. What we, we see the benefits of that protection. Uh, but candidly, the number is uh, still too low. And to that end, uh, we're giving updates on three important efforts today. First, access to and hesitancy toward getting vaccines remain top priorities especially among historically underserved uh, demographics. That's why at the start of April, we announced the COVID-19 Community Recovery Grant Program. I'm happy to report uh, that the grant winners will be announced by the end of this week. But I want to say a heartfelt thank you to all who applied. The vaccines are a life-saving resource that need to be as widely available as possible. Even now, our city continues to see deaths as a result of the COVID-19 virus. And we need to eliminate, we are morally obligated to eliminate that altogether. That's why I'm also happy to mention another vaccine initiative from the Marion County Department of Public Health. Beginning today and occurring twice more this month, county health officials will set up vaccine clinics at three area high schools. Today's event occurs at North Central High School, followed by one at Arsenal Tech, on June the 12th, and then again at Warren Central on June 19th. These clinics will provide the Pfizer vaccine for any 12 to 17 year old, helping halt the formation of COVID-19 variants in our young people. And as I said, Dr. Kane will provide greater insight uh, on that aspect uh, of protecting our young people uh, from the variants. Thirdly, and finally, this weekend, we will reprise our uh, vaccine sign-up hotline for non-English speakers. In March, United for Indy received over 1,000 calls in a single day from our Spanish-speaking neighbors, our Spanish-speaking residents, who were looking to learn more 
and book their vaccine appointments. This Saturday, residents of our city who speak any one of a list of nine languages can call to get information from fluent volunteers. That means not only English and Spanish will be covered, but also Arabic, Burmese, Chinese, French, Hakka Chin, Swahili, and Yarubu. I encourage anyone with a network that includes non-English speakers who live in Marion County to spread the word. Saturday's event will last from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the number to call will be 317-221-2100. That's 317-221-2100. Zero, zero. With these and other programs ongoing, we hope to reach 50% of Marion County residents being vaccinated by July the 4th. And upon meeting that benchmark, we will be in a position to remove further restrictions for all of the residents of Marion County. I know how fatigued everyone is with these restrictions. Uh, and so I can't encourage enough coming forward, getting the vaccine so that Marion County uh, can be in a position uh, to return to a full sense of normalcy. So with that, I'll hand it off to my partner, Dr. Kane. Uh, to allow her to elaborate on some of the statistics, as well as to comment on several of these important initiatives that the city, along with the Marion County Department of Health, uh, Public Health, is initiating uh, to promote greater vaccination. Dr. Kane. So, uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, uh, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> As we move into this warmer weather and continue the reopening of our community, uh, it is the exciting time of year when summer camps, summer school, and community pools are opening up. And with that in mind, uh, we wanted to offer some guidance to safely enjoy these uh, activities. So in our new public health orders, that we will be submitting to city council on June the 7th, we're recommending that our community pools can be open at 100% capacity. The CDC is not aware of any scientific reports that COVID-19 can spread uh, through water in treated aquatic venues. So our current public health protocols including hand washing and disinfecting of frequently touched services uh, should continue. Uh, golf courses um, will be at the 75% capacity indoors as well as museums, uh, gyms, fitness centers, dance studios. And campgrounds and youth day camps can be open and should take the following steps though to ensure the safety of their participants. We're gonna strongly encourage vaccination for all eligible people, including the staff. We wanna use multiple prevention strategies, including masks, social distancing, and keeping our campers in consistent assigned groups. And children and staff should eat meals and snacks outdoors when feasible and should remain six feet distance if eating or drinking uh, outdoors. So any COVID-19 cases among the staff at our campus should be reported to our Marion County contact tracing team. So don't forget, um, 
if they're outdoors as campers, they're allowed to not have to wear their masks. Now, summer schools should continue to also follow our current school guidance. And as you uh, may realize, we are now using three feet distancing for all students, whether you're from K through 12th grade, for all the students, and we're doing contact tracing within a three feet uh, distance um, um, a set of criteria. Now, as Mayor Hotset mentioned, though, the data I will present momentarily uh, shows our daily new cases are continuing to drop and our positivity rate is hovering right at our 5% goal. So this is, this is good news as we approach the city council uh, meeting on Monday and we prepare to submit the new recommended public health order that relaxes some of our capacity restrictions and removes the mass mandate for fully vaccinated individuals. But we still have work to do if we are to reach 50% of our residents vaccinated in Marion County in order to lift all restrictions by July the 4th. And that is why the Marion County Public Health Department and the city of Indianapolis, we are continuing our efforts to address vaccine hesitancy and improve access to the life-saving protection the vaccine offers. So if you or your loved one have not yet received the vaccine, you can continue to walk in our clinics today. We're located at 3685 Commercial Drive, and 9503 East 33rd Street. So at 4 p.m. today, our first of three mass vaccination clinics for children and any teens between the ages of 12 to 17, we are offering the Pfizer vaccine, which will kick off at North Central High School today. This event is open to every student in Marion County and their families, regardless of what school district you're from or township. Walk-ins are welcome and family members older than 17, hey, you can get vaccinated as well. So parental or guardian consent is required at the time of a first dose. And this Saturday, Mayor, we're also gonna host a pop-up clinic at Friendship Missionary Baptist Church that will offer the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. And this clinic is a partnership between not only Friendship uh, Missionary Baptist Church, but we will have New Light Missionary Baptist Church, New Direction Worship Center, and the Promised Land Christian Community Church. Uh, all those churches are partnering together for this pop-up clinic, and it's gonna run from 12 to 4 p.m., and walk-ins are welcome. And later this week, um, as you announced, Mayor, we will announce the recipients of the $1 million in grant funds aimed at supporting our continued recovery of our minority communities and improving our vaccination rates in our traditionally underserved neighborhoods. Now, I would like to echo Mayor Hotsets thanks to all who have applied. Our advisory council uh, has been working hard to thoroughly vet every application and make these award decisions that will benefit our Indy residents. So I would also like to thank the volunteers making this Saturday's United for Indy event possible. And I encourage residents who speak one of those nine languages that the mayor talked about today to call again, 317-327-2100. Please call us, 317-327-2100 this Saturday so you can sign up for a vaccine appointment. 
Now, uh, Mayor, I think I'm ready to walk through the current data for Marion County. As you can see, when we look at the trends from the United States, Indiana, and Marion County, we're starting to see our downward trend related to our coronavirus cases, pandemic, along with the world. Next slide. And as you can see, when we look at percentage of our community uh, who are positive for COVID-19 tests, we are at our staying flat and level at, at, our, at our goal we're trying to reach of 5%. And when we look at our newly confirmed cases uh, as the end of May the 29th, you will see that whereas back in early May, we were nearly over 170 to 180 cases, we are now have reached to 77 cases uh, per day on a seven day average. So we're definitely going in the right direction. Next slide. Our ED visits with COVID-19 symptoms have also plateaued. And we're seeing no more than about 31 new cases or ED visits uh, for, for all of our surrounding hospitals. Next slide. And for our first time hospitalizations, we've also have been reduced to no more than nine new COVID-19 cases being hospitalized each day, a significant decline since early May. Thank you. Next slide. And as the mayor says, we continue to average about one death per day uh, in Marion County. And so we still have our work to do. We should have no deaths reported um, in the county of Marion County. So uh, we have an opportunity of making this happen by uh, July the 4th. Next slide. When we look at how we compare to other Midwest urban areas, you will see that we are now at nine cases, new cases per 100,000 population. So Louisville, Indianapolis, and Chicago, uh, we have comparable numbers along with Detroit. Only Cincinnati and Columbus, Ohio, and Milwaukee have lower new cases per 100,000 population. Next slide. Tell me how do we fare and look compared to our surrounding central Indiana counties? You will see that all of the counties, Hamilton, Marion, Hancock, Shelby, Johnson, Oregon, and Hendricks have seen a downward trend with the exception of Boone County, which is seeing a slightly increase uh, in their cases uh, through May the 31st. Next slide. How does the state of Indiana compare? So Indiana is looking at no more than seven new cases, 100,000 residents, and very, and very similar with Kentucky, Ohio, Illinois, and Michigan. So there, all these states have nearly almost the same new cases occurring per 100,000 residents. They're seeing a decline in all of the states. Next slide. Now, our age distribution is a little disturbing. May the 25th, and that is we're still seeing an increase in our um, cases less than the age of 20. And we've now gone up to 24% in the month of May. And we are seeing a slight reduction in the 20 to the 39 year olds uh, related to this percentage. And with the lowest percentage of our seniors, less than eight of the cases. As a reminder, still, 20 to the 39-year-olds are 
are contributing to almost 45% of our cases. And this is the group that we really strongly need to target along with our 40 to 59 year olds. Next slide. So as you can see here, um, uh, we saw uh, after May the 1st, a significantly large number of new cases after spring break that occurred. And primarily seeing it in our high school students uh, related to that time. Since that time and since that period of, of weeks have surpassed, we have now gotten down uh, to the uh, rate of cases that we feel very comfortable about that is causing a low transmission in our communities all the way through June the 1st. So if you look at the less than the five-year-olds, uh, they are basically uh, less than five cases per new cases per day, along with middle school, which we're seeing no more than three cases per day. And if we look at the adults, everyone over the age of 18, uh, we're seeing about no more than seven new cases a day. So we're definitely going in the right direction. We're making some substantial uh, um, uh, increases in our prevention efforts, resulting in these good results. And so um, we just have to continue along those uh, vein. Next slide. Now, highlights vaccine dose administration. And as you see, in the month of April was the highest month where we were providing the most uh, largest number of vaccinations uh, in Marion County. We're now seeing a decrease in the number of people that were vaccinated. So we're now reaching that group that's more vaccine hesitant uh, and more in our underserved neighborhoods. And so we have an incredible challenge uh, before us, but we feel that those $1 million mini grants that we're going to get out into the community will be this whole new army of volunteers, ambassadors, uh, working in their own neighborhoods, working in their own social networks, helping us to provide the education we need in order to protect their loved ones, their friends, their neighbors, um, and themselves. So look to see, we believe that this vaccination rate will change in the next 30 days. Next slide. We're now at 30, 6% fully vaccinated as of May the 30th. We are at about 41% uh, in Marion County for those who have received at least one vaccine. 36% fully vaccinated as of May the 30th. And our goal, remember, is to reach 50% of vaccination for our community to uh, lift our mass mandate. Next slide. If we break it down by race and ethnicity, we continue to see the highest rate of vaccination is occurring in our white uh, communities at 38%. We're followed by the Latino population and our Asian population at 24%, with our lowest rate of vaccination occurring in our black in African American communities. And so we have to continue to really aggressively try to provide free access for vaccines, more education in these different uh, cultural populations uh, in order to have all of these different racial groups uh, vaccinated at the same level as their white counterparts. And so with that, Mayor, um, that ends my 
uh, data presentation. The question and answer portion, as always, members of the media can put their name and outlet in the Q&A box um, and uh, I will unmute and call on them. I will say there have been a couple of cases where folks have said that they've put their info in and, and have not uh, been called on in those cases. Feel free to uh, uh, send me a message over email or text and I'll be sure to make sure we get your question in. Uh, first question is from Erica Heron of IndyStar. Erica. Thanks. I just um, wonder if Dr. Kim could clarify uh, the mask mandate will be lifting, but you said schools and summer schools should continue to follow guidance. So will fully vaccinated students have to wear masks in school during summer school? So, you know, it's the school's decision, but I think if you have a student that's fully vaccinated or a teacher or staff that's fully vaccinated, they would not have to follow requirements of wearing a mask and doing social distancing. Thanks, Dr. Kane. Uh, next question is from Russ Dodge of WITT. Uh, yes, I, I wanted to know a little more. Oh, sorry, Russ. Say it again. You got me okay? Hey, yeah, I accidentally muted you. You can go again. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, this uh, deals with the procedures with the city county council for uh, having the uh, regulations changed. Uh, what can you do without the city county council and what do they have to approve? So I can't make any changes to my emergency orders without the approval of the city council. Um, um, uh, basically, um, in terms of the uh, restrictions. Now, sometimes I'm able to give some waivers and I still have that ability a little bit in my prior public health orders, but it depends on what, uh, what it is. Thanks, Dr. Kane. Paul, do you have anything to add to that? No, that follows the Senate Bill 5 in the law. Great. Thanks, Paul. Uh, our next question is from Mary Mills of WTHR. Mary? Uh, good afternoon. I have just a couple of quick questions. In terms of pools, 100%, what about camps? Is there a capacity limit for summer camps? And then the other question, um, what about social distancing? Did is that been reduced from six feet down to three, or what's the status of that at this point? Coming. So the, um, the, um, uh, I'll, I'll answer the question first about um, the schools. Um, so we have reduced it from six feet social distancing to three feet, especially for high schoolers from ninth to the 12th grade. And what have you. And in terms of the camps, um, I believe the capacity is that we're looking at to have it at 75% capacity. Thanks, Dr. Kane. Our next question is from Russ McQuaid of Fox 59 CBS4. Russ. Um, we're not hearing you, Russ. Um, I may ask that you go ahead and message me your question. Um, for whatever reason, we're not picking up volume. Our next question is from uh, Eric Berman of WIBC. Eric. Eric, can you try again? Um, we're not picking it up you either. You can go ahead and uh, send me a message as well. Um, uh, and we'll look to get to it if we can. Uh, our next question is from Sherry Rudovsky of the Indianapolis Star. Sherry? I'm sorry, we seem to be having uh, technical difficulties. We are. Uh, not um, picking up uh, volume from reporters. Um, so uh, I will be uh, tracking as best I can my messages here. Um, please submit your questions and I'll read them aloud. 
the question from Russ McQuaid is, uh, Dr. Kane, what are you requesting from the council uh, on Monday night? So I think it's a combination of sort of what are the updates from today and what were the updates uh, that we mentioned we were expecting to do um, at the last public health update. So I'll just tell you a few of the things, and we're still looking at some issues that we haven't finalized. But for example, um, we're increasing capacity at religious services and funerals at 100 uh, percent. We're looking at our indoor service uh, in bars to go from 50 percent to 75 percent. Uh, our restaurants will remain at 75 percent capacity, and of course, for any bar or restaurant, if you have outdoor activities, it's at 100% capacity. Um, our indoor sports are the large events. We went from a current uh, capacity of 25%. Uh, we're going to a 50% capacity for indoor sports, our large events. And for our entertainment and cultural institutions, uh, we're going from 50% to 75%. Um, items such as like our um, uh, our gymnasiums, fitness, the zoo, museums, uh, even dance studios will be open. And that capacity yoga will go from 50% capacity to like 75% uh, percent. Uh, entertainment venues, of course, can now have dancing is something that we'll be producing. And so I'm just trying to think of what are some other uh, things that we uh, have been uh, looking at. So those are just a few of the things that we are, um, uh, we will be approaching city council with uh, expanding and loosening restrictions. Thanks, Dr. Kane. And as always, anybody can feel free to, to follow up with the health department for the, 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 the bullet point list of, of what's expected. Uh, our, our next question is from Wish TV, uh, Brady Gibson. Uh, the Colts and Lucas Oil Stadium are the only NFL facility not approved for 100% capacity. Do you anticipate a full capacity stadium this fall? Uh, that's that's my uh, my goal of to to hopefully make that happen. It depends on this community and how quickly they respond, but that is our goal. Thank you, Dr. Kane. Um, question from Eric Berman of WIBC. Um, first off, to clarify, the 50% goal that we have for July 4th, are we talking about 50% of all residents or 50% of eligible residents? So those 12 and up. Wow. Um, I think it's 50% of uh, all residents for our vaccination. Thanks, Dr. Kane. And then a follow up to that uh, uh, from Eric is um, the Indy 500, despite the 40% capacity limit, didn't have much social distancing going on. Is there concern about an uptick in the coming days or do you expect vaccinations? And the fact of the outdoor nature of the event um, will help uh, keep those levels lower. So let me just say that um, um, I enjoyed the event uh, and I can say at least that uh, stand where I was sitting, um, the people in front of me were wearing a uh, mask and the people surrounding me uh, wearing masks. And I have to, I wanted to commend a young teenager. I guess where I was sitting, the, the race cars was so loud. I made a comment to uh, uh, one of our, um, our staff that, wow, this is killing my ears. And a young teenage boy reached and gave me a package of earplugs. He opened a new package of earplugs. And I just have to, I want to just commend him. Thank you. He wouldn't take any money for it and whatever. And both he and his father were wearing masks with the surrounding people. So, you know, we want people to practice responsible public health behaviors. Uh, we've taken an education first approach throughout the pandemic. And we believe our residents have stepped up. Was mask wearing as prevalent as we wanted it to be? No, but mask wearing was just one layer of the safety protocols we had on Sunday. The other pieces that we felt were also critical to making it a very safe event was the percentage of vaccinated individuals, the lower transmission rates 
we have from a outdoor activity, but also limiting overall spectator capacity. Thanks, Dr. Kane. Um, our next question is a follow-up from Mary Mills at WTHR. Um, what is the state of social distancing requirements in bars and restaurants? Are those governed by just the overall capacity requirements or are there distances that are prescribed for those, for those uh, places? So Mary, you would ask me a tough question. This one that we're still trying to debate between Friday. So they have an overall 75% capacity and we're looking at a six foot distancing is this our standard practice, but we are exploring the ability of, of uh, reducing that requirements to three feet. We just haven't made a final decision related to that in terms of trying to look and carefully review the evidence to see whether we're able to do that or not. Thanks, Dr. Kane. Our next question is uh, from Sherry Rudowski of the star again, she says, when the mask mandate lifts for fully vaccinated individuals, do you have any plans to monitor or enforce whether unmasked people are masked or unmasked? And if so, what are those plans? So uh, let me just say that, you know, um, you know, we're gonna uh, try to do the honor system, unfortunately, and some people may choose the, that path just as some people have disregarded our health guidance throughout this pandemic. Uh, it's incumbent amongst the, on us to try to help make vaccine as, access as easy as possible, make sure our residents have accurate information about the vaccine and its effects. Uh, and because every person who does not get the vaccine and do not follow our mask guidelines, they put themselves and their friends, family, neighbors at risk. But uh, Sherry, we, we, we have to do the honor system. Uh, there's just no way we have the ability uh, to know who's vaccinated and, and not. And I think we have to look at our different uh, businesses, institutions and whatever uh, to develop a system related uh, to, to that. And, and to follow up on that, Dr. Kane, she's wondering uh, would the uh, public health measures go into effect immediately upon passage on June 7th uh, or at a later date? Um, and Paul, you correct me if I'm wrong. I might add from our last one, I, I believe I, it's um, once it's uh, approved by the council uh, and signed by the mayor, um, signed by the council and the mayor, that's when the uh, order goes into effect. So Paul, yeah, no, you're correct, Mark. That so upon passage and voting Monday night, uh, they'll go into effect. So it would. Uh, so we. So uh, yes. Yeah. All right, all. Uh, those were the questions I uh, saw uh, and the messages I received. Apologies for the technical difficulties. We'll check back on our end and. Hopefully we, we won't run into this in the future, but thank you for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned, we will send out the uh, slide presentation uh, from myself or the Public Health Department, and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any follow-up questions. Thanks all.